The words rational and reason should be such confident parts of our understanding of public discussion. And yet I think their traditional definitions don't quite capture what we mean by them. In this video, I'll show you why I say that. I'll also suggest how a simple tidy up of the definitions will give the words a more solid foundation. But first, let's look at the words in action. That's where they're at. They're not rational right now. It's totally rational, except it's evil and bad. They're making rational decisions that may seem illogical to us, but they're making rational decisions. When you think somebody's acting irrationally, you don't yet understand them. Human beings are far less rational than we are rationalizing. The reasons that you've chosen the things you do, the emotional reasons. There are good historical and cultural reasons that they might deny it. Uh, there are practical reasons to do so. Is for emotional, cultural, and rational reasons. This is an episode of Go Meta, where I explore ideas in a way that I hope contributes to a culture of healthy public discussion. We've looked at some clips. Let's see how these compare to the traditional dictionary definitions of rational and reason. A traditional definition would say something is rational if it is based on clear thought and reason, or if it has reason or understanding. As with many dictionaries, these two define rational and rationality in relation to reason. So what about reason? Reason is defined as the ability of a healthy mind to think and make judgments especially based on practical facts and reason is the proper exercise of the mind. Let's take a look at how Michael Sandel describes Kant's view of how these words relate to each other. We're all rational beings, which simply means that we are beings who are capable of reason. So for a long time, the traditional definition has essentially been that reason is our capacity to think clearly and that humans are rational because we have the capacity to reason. But as we saw in the clips, we often actually use the term rational to specify a particular kind of reason. We might say she gave rational reasons for her actions as opposed to having given, say, emotional reasons or practical reasons or cultural reasons. And then reason is our general capacity to sensibly weigh up, discuss and argue in favour of or against all such reasons. And whether you have a preference for emotional or practical or rational reasons, we all have the capacity to engage in some kinds of reasoning. But as we saw a moment ago, the traditional definition of rational is as our general capacity for reason. And now, these two uses of the term rational appear to be in tension. One describes a particular type of reasoning and the other describes our general capacity for all types of reasoning. But a traditionalist might say, ah no, rationality is the capacity for logical reasoning. And indeed, often when we say it's a rational reason, we mean it's a logical one. So now it looks like these two uses of the term are in alignment. But now the tension sits with our use of the term reason, because if reason is about logic, that seems at odds with it also being our capacity for some other kinds of reasoning, such as emotional and cultural reasoning. In particular, we see emotional reasoning as being very different from logical reasoning. Whichever route you go, there appears to be a tension, or indeed contradiction, in the traditional definitions. I think there's a fairly simple way to fix this, not with a radical change, just a bit of tidying up. We just link the definition of rational directly to our capacity for logic. Now, these two uses of rational are in good alignment. One is a type of argument and the other is our capacity to make such an argument. And now, reason and rational 
each describe slightly separate, well-defined capacities. Reason is our capacity to organize and explain our thinking and provide arguments to support those explanations. Within that capacity, we're able to make judgments and comparisons between many kinds of reasons, including emotional reasons and rational reasons. An example of a rational reason is one that is based on logic. But more generally, I'm saying an argument is rational if it is supported by the results of a calculation. That calculation may be some symbolic logic, or some mathematics, or more generally, a computation. So as well as us all having the capacity to reason, we all have the capacity to be rational, to perform calculations. They are separate, albeit related, capacities. So I'm suggesting that we should define reason as the ability to organize and to explain your thinking to others, and indeed to yourself. This explicitly links reason to a form of social behavior, which typically involves the use of language to calmly explain our thinking in a mode of dialogue that is different from, say, commanding or intimidating others. This capacity to explain our thinking is uniquely human. Then, separately, our thinking is rational if it is supported by the use of calculations. This new definition of rational fits well with many uses of the word. An argument is rational if it is based on rigorous logic. Many results from science are rational in that they are based on the results of calculations. Also, as calculations proceed without any interest in emotions, so we get the typical view that rational arguments are independent of emotional concerns. This definition also sits well with the notion of a rational agent as being someone who makes choices in line with their interests according to some calculation. Conversely, someone is not being rational if they appear to be making choices that go against their calculated interests. Using these new definitions together, we can now confidently say that even if somebody is not using rational calculations to structure their thinking, they can still be using reason. They can still be able to explain some kind of organized coherence to their thinking. Maybe they're reasoning by analogy or using cultural narratives or whatever. So this makes reason a very broad category, whereas rational reasoning is a narrower subset of this. The boundary of what is considered to be reasoning behavior is maybe quite vague. In contrast, the boundary for what counts as a rational argument is much more precise as it rests on our well-defined notions of formal systems like symbolic logic, mathematics and computation. One thing that comes directly out of this is a simplified but useful view of modernism as being the belief that all well-reasoned arguments are rational arguments based ultimately on formal symbolic calculations. On top of this, modernists believe that these rational arguments can be seen as neutral, as being independent of personal bias. We can also get a simplified but useful view of postmodernism as questioning the authority and neutrality of rational arguments. But this does not have to be at the expense of valuing the use of reason as a mode of dialogue in which you organize and explain your thinking. After all, postmodernists spent a lot of time organizing and explaining their thinking. And postmodernism does not always include the complete dismissal of the potential value of using rational calculations to support some arguments. In other videos, I will explore further these simplified conceptions of modernism and postmodernism. So I hope I've given you a glimpse of why I find these slightly newer definitions of rational and reason more useful to work with than their traditional definitions. Whenever I use the words reason or rational, I always mean them in the sense I've talked about here. And in the description of the video, 
I'll leave some links to some other videos and blog posts where I explore some further ideas that build upon these definitions. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please do click on the like button below or subscribe to my channel, as that will encourage YouTube to share this video with more people. And what do you think of these new definitions? Please do leave comments below. Thank you for watching.